This idea was furthered by a cult philosopher, Manly P. Hall, in the early part of the 20th century. Hall not only believed that the Great Seal was Masonic, but that it was created through the collective consciousness of the occult societies and represented the secret destiny that they had in mind for America. I'd say that he saw the secret destiny of America as the beginning of a world democracy and that this was a kind of um, an experiment in democracy that had been envisioned for thousands of years before. So he saw this much like Francis Bacon envisioned what he called the New Atlantis. In 1926, Hall began publishing a newspaper called The All-Seeing Eye, dedicated to his occult views of philosophy. It was during Hall's era that the all-seeing eye of the Great Seal would be taken out of obscurity and placed on the back of the dollar bill by President Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1935. This might all be seen as just a coincidence, if not for the fact that FDR seemed to be familiar with Hall's teachings on the occult. Today, Hall's legacy is carried on at the Philosophical Research Society in Los Angeles, California. A society that Hall founded in 1934, just one year before the Great Seal found its way onto the back of the dollar bill. The current president of Hall Society is Dr. Obadiah Harris, shown here in what is called the Wisdom Library at PRS. According to their website, the library is made up of writings that deal with divination, tarot cards, Kabbalah, alchemy, astrology, metaphysics, Buddhism, theosophy, and secret societies. And wisdom literature is about relationships uh, not only to each other, but, but to nature, to the universe. That's what this library is. This library is a library about the wisdom that is in nature and in uh, your in relationships and how it is that you can tap into that wisdom in any culture it all overlaps and mr hall felt like that was really the future for the human race like Hall, Dr. Harris believes in the destiny of America. Even more interesting is that Dr. Harris's own writing on the subject was unofficially acknowledged by an important figure in FDR's White House. I, uh, I wrote a little book one time, one of my first books that I wrote was The Reawakening of the Americas. So we usually lose sight of the fact that the whole continent and I, I got a little one-cent postcard from Eleanor Roosevelt thanking me for that. I, I carried that around for years because I thought that was a, a great compliment. But even more important was the familiarity that President Franklin Roosevelt had with the arcane literature in Manley Hall's so-called Wisdom Library a collection of occult books that Hall had gathered from all over the world. And Mr. Roosevelt himself, as you know, back in 1942, after the Pearl Harbor invasion, sent some of his people here to, to microfiche uh, the works of the, in this library because he looked upon it as a national treasure. He wanted to preserve it. And, uh, I was surprised that when I first heard that just how much he seemed to know about such a treasure of wisdom that is contained here. FDR's interest in the arcane and mystical was further reflected in the relationship he had with his Secretary of Agriculture, Henry Asgard Wallace. And so it was then in 1935 uh, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the President of the United States and Henry Wallace was the Secretary of Agriculture. Now, Henry Wallace was deeply involved in the occult. 
Wallace's interest in mysticism was well known in circles around Washington, D.C., but it was something that would eventually damage his career in American politics. H.L. Mencken dubbed Wallace the Swami, while it was also said of him that he was the only cabinet member who dabbled in the occult and who could cast a horoscope. In spite of all this, FDR ardently defended him. According to one account, when one of FDR's close advisors worried that many people considered Wallace a mystic, Roosevelt snapped, he's not a mystic, he's a philosopher, he's got ideas, he thinks right, he'll help people think. But the question was, who was helping Wallace think? This question has been deemed critical because it was Henry Wallace who suggested to FDR that the great seal be placed on the back of the dollar bill. But why? Well, it has a lot to do, let's go back to really important individuals here. His name is Nicholas Rorick. And Nicholas Rorick um, was a very um, advanced spiritual soul with considerable vision. Nicholas Rorick was also a Rosicrucian. He was also a member of other secret societies. Rorick was a Russian painter and mystic who was deeply involved in theosophy and the teachings of Madame H.P. Blavatsky. He is famous for his travels into Tibet and the Far East in search of the legendary kingdom of Shambhala. But what was his relationship to FDR's Secretary of Agriculture? I believe that Nicholas Rourke was a spiritual teacher, not a supreme spiritual teacher, but was a teacher of Henry Asgard Wallace. Rourke was considered not only a teacher, but a spiritual mentor and guru to Henry Wallace. It's believed that Wallace recommended the Great Seal to FDR because of the mystical influence Rorick held over him. The dollar bill was approved with the all-seeing eye and the, and the truncated pyramid uh, with the all-seeing eye on the top of the... Um, because of uh, Nicholas Rorick. In the book, Tournament of Shadows, the authors document much of the activities and influence of Rorick during this period. They write that Rorick's influence was suspected in the adornment of the one dollar bill, with a verso of the Great Seal showing a pyramid crowned by an all-seeing eye. The story of Wallace's role with FDR is told by the State Department in an official history called The Eagle and the Shield, a history of the Great Seal of the United States. Henry Wallace, while sitting in the State Department, found a booklet on the Great Seal of the United States. Wallace recollects that day in letters he wrote in 1951 and in 1955. He says, turning to page 53, I noted the colored reproduction of the reverse side of the seal. The Latin phrase, Novus Ordo Seclorum, impressed me as meaning the New Deal of the Ages. If in terms of the dollar, if there's a code uh, about uh, the New World Order, um, I think that they jumped a few decades from the New Deal because the, the, the Novus Ordum Seclorum can be translated to the New Deal in English as easily and readily as to the New Order or the New World Order. Initially, Wallace envisioned the Great Seal appearing on a coin. He took the idea to President Roosevelt. So when Henry Wallace saw this booklet and saw this pyramid in the Iron Triangle, he was a Freemason. He was a member of a secret society. Immediately he said, whoa, what a symbol to have uh, and not use. Let's use this. So it was he that went to uh, the president, FDR, and FDR being a Freemason, looked at those symbols and said, hey, yes, wow, this is, you know, this is, uh, that's the uh, new order of the ages, what's the new deal? He used, he actually thought to a degree that the uh, new Novus Ordo Seclorum was the new deal. Wallace wrote that Roosevelt, as he looked at the colored reproduction of the seal, was first struck with the all-seeing eye. 
a Masonic representation of the great architect of the universe.